color source existing. Put that back uh, there. There. And then there. That's a little better. Okay. Oh boy, it's been an exciting morning figuring this stuff out. Trying to get my camera to, like, right now it's absolutely not focused because I've had to manually focus it because if I have it on autofocus, it decides to jump back and forth. So right now everything's blurry because it's not within focus. And then I had the wonderful discovery <laughs> just before I was about to start the stream at 10.30 as usual that for whatever reason, Discord and my webcam don't get along. I can have one or the other. So, and and the thing is, if I closed disc, uh, Discord, it would just completely knock out my webcam. I'd have to restart my computer. So, <laughs> we won't be doing any Discord. Yeah. Yeah, that was a pain in the ass. No, knocking that out. Okay, well, so I didn't have any... Uh, I don't have any Christmas themed miniatures, but I do have a Minotaur here. And uh, so we're gonna do like a, I don't know, pretend this is Krampus or something for, can I make that bigger on my end? I don't know, I think that's fine. All right. I've got a, I've got a whole ton of miniatures here, but uh, yeah, <laughs> none of them. None of them even remotely Christmassy. I do have uh, some Transformers. I've got oh, a bunch of bunch of crap, a bunch of Warhammer stuff. Moving chat to the other side. Well, not really, because I'm going to be having the painting here. So I think this is actually probably best where chat is. I could try and reduce chat. Might be a little bit big. But I think it'll be it'll be framed just fine. Okay. It has been so long since I've painted that when I opened this thing, all the paper was shriveled up and the the sponge underneath it had dried out. So I had to let that soak for about half an hour. That's fun. I've got my elbow socks here so I can rest my elbows. Okay, and then I gotta get. Get some sticky tack. My chair's gonna creak all over the place. All right, this base is enormous, and it is absolutely not gonna fit in this thing. Plus, it's flimsy as shit. So, I'm just gonna tack this on. Now, these miniatures are supposed to be pre-primed, so I guess we'll see. Because it is way too cold to be priming miniatures outside right now. Alright, so... This is going to be really awkward, because the camera is way over here. That looks about good, though, for focus. Yeah, that'll work. All right. So, um, sorry, I have to keep, I have to keep muting myself, otherwise you're going to hear my chair creak all over the place. Let's see, how about that one? Okay, so, like, I've got these. I, I've got a, a small unit of, of beastmen, and that's kind of what I got a lot of these for. So like when I started collecting all these miniatures, I had this thing for like the barbarian themes and uh, just like beastmen and all this stuff. So I'm going to try and paint within this style, I guess, in this coloration. So... 
thing is I can't quite remember how I colored this. Uh, I guess Barbarian Flesh. Alright, so we'll need some of that. And then... I guess I can give this a shot. This almost looks like it's separated. That's how long this has been. So we'll try the Fire Slayer. And then we'll go with... For, I guess, I guess Fur Brown. Uh, I mean, that's true. I don't know. I don't know if Animal Crossing music is going to get flagged or not. That's a good, that's a good point. Um, well, what else is there? I guess I can go back to Stardew Valley. Um, browser? Okay, I'm back. Stream still up? Yeah, maybe? No? Okay. <laughs> God. This is a this is a hell of a thing. Let's just go back to Stardew then. Act, uh, Harvest Moon is also Nintendo. Yeah, I mean, I, I I like the the music, but yeah, that's a good point. The Nintendo is not exactly friendly anymore. There. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, I'll give this a shot. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe tanned flesh would be better? I wish I could remember what I did on this. No, this will be fine. God knows how long it's been. I'm going to have to shake my paints. Heard what? Totally wrong. Oh man, so aside from the other setup, I also had to change out the light bulb. How do you... <laughs> okay. is about to start. Okay. That's a new thing. Twitch is now telling me when ads are about to start. Okay. Alright. Now let's hope this is good enough. So yeah, like... I've got this little ring light over here. Which is nice. Just to add a, an extra little layer of, of light. I can change, like you can see it's kind of warm right now. I can change it to either just straight fluorescent, kind of cool, or warm it up. And this light uh, is normally uh, kind of like a, a warm yellowy light, but I had to change it and swap it out for fluorescent <laughs> because it's otherwise too warm for this. So, all right. Okay, it's plugged. <laughs> a 
we'll, we'll get the painting sometime today. There we go. Alright, just put all this crap out there. And then one of my many brushes. Okay. I'll just start in the back. I don't know. It says this is pre primed. Gotta stay within the camera here. It says it's pre primed, but I don't know. Oh, you know what? Oh, that's awful. I just noticed there is a, a huge gap right there in the arm. That's actually that's actually pretty terrible. So let me see here. I do have a little bit of plaster. I could put in there. In fact, I should be filling all the gaps by the look of it. Or just, you don't care. <laughs> just don't care. That's fine. You gotta stay with it. You'll have to let me know if it's out of focus, because I'm gonna have to change that manually. That was another thing that I had. So when I started the camera, um, it was putting it in standard format instead of widescreen format. So I had to figure that one out. And apparently, even though I I can't uh, change it somehow in the the default, you know, Logitech. Getting out of focus of the camera there. Uh, in in the default Logitech software. OBS, I can force it into the widescreen. So that's good. But then uh, to focus, I have to open up the controls through the software. And then, you know what? <laughs> I seem to prefer it here, so maybe I need to change the camera there a little bit. There, that's that's in focus a little bit more. So yeah, it's been uh, it's been a little bit of a learning experience this morning. I'm glad I actually got up a little early today, as opposed to starting the stream like ten minutes <laughs> before getting up before ten minutes. Probably should have gone with a different brush for this. I also have uh, some magnifying goggles that I would be wearing right now, but I don't need to. Don't need it that bad. It's really nice for detail. Unfortunately, when I'm not wearing my contacts, it means I'm blind everywhere else. 
Uh, it's the, what is this called? Logitech HD uh, Pro C920, I think. It is, it is a pretty good camera. Pretty cheap, too. It's the one that I used for my 10-year, 10, 10 10,000 subscriber video. Seven year, however long ago that was. Definitely starting to look a little pale, but I will let that go. I didn't get the ears. It's too wet. Plus the hands. How could I forget the hands? got the same camera I, I mean it's probably a very common camera because uh, when I was looking up stuff for like streaming cameras and whatnot this was highly recommended Missing a lot here. <laughs> I'm doing terribly. <laughs> Need to get my elbows on these pads here. I think I will switch to a brush for the second layer. So is that... Let me see here. Is that too much light glare? Should I turn that off, maybe? It definitely puts in the shadows again, doesn't it? I'll just turn that off. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, I see some people on YouTube, especially like the the how-to um, channels, and like they'll have the the big you know film production type cameras and it's just like you don't need that I mean it, it's entirely possible that these people actually do like film stuff you know as their job or whatever but like if you're just if you're just doing it for streaming you don't you don't need a fancy camera as long as it looks nice Yeah, that's that's a little much. Like, when when you're paying, you know, however many thousands of dollars for professional equipment, like that's you need to you need to be in the profession. I feel to justify that. It 
It's just kind of like all the the expensive gaming chairs you always see. You know, it's the same same type of chair, and like every streamer has it. And it's just like, do you, do you really need that? I mean, I know it's what everyone has, but you don't. I mean, it's it's a chair. Oh God, yes, and microphones. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't have the best microphone, obviously. But, uh... Again, you know, you don't, you don't need... You know, radio studio quality. <laughs> Alright. Let's try this brush. My poor, beat-up dry brush here. Speaking of doing what everyone else does, um, it's like this is standard uh, dry brush that came with, with armor painter stuff. As you can see, it is absolutely miserable. But uh, what I have got now are makeup brushes for doing dry brush. Because apparently the soft bristles are fantastic for it. That is one tip, at least, that I've decided to uh, follow everyone else with. Camera, <laughs> camera wobbling as I shake the hell out of this thing. Come on, come on. There's a blockage in there. And to get out my handy dandy unclogger. Yes, two thin coats <laughs> is ideal. I so uh, the Games Workshop, who you know has the the Warhammer IP, um, has an, an actual official channel on YouTube, and the painting tutorials now are kind of meh. But uh, the old ones, because now it's done for like content brevity, so like you get a three minute. Uh, video on like painting skin and then the next video is painting the hair or, or whatever uh, whereas they used to be like a full 20 minute to half hour video of doing like a full painting of a, a miniature um, that really helped me a lot learning all, all the techniques and whatnot because they're very accessible like you, you see some painting channels that are just absolutely absolutely outrageous in, uh, in their quality like uh, I think uh, Sarastro's painting. I think that's probably th one of the best uh, painting channels I've seen. I also like watching Juan Hidalgo. Uh, he's very good. He does uh, contrast painting as compared to like the, the layer painting. But uh, yeah, like, man. <laughs> the, the difference between actual professional painters and the accessible painters. It's pretty wild. It's starting to get a little off on the tack there. But if this works out, and it seems to be working out all right, this is the sort of thing that I can do uh, for my own channel. What I would like to do is incorporate it all together. So, like 3D, the 3D programs, um, I'd like to 
you know, do like sculpting your own miniature and then like how to print it out and then we do a painting video on, on that sort of thing. Again, plans, plans, plans. But now that I'm monetized and now that I can make several channels to be monetized, uh, maybe I'll be a little bit more motivated to get that started. For the for pre-primed, this seems all right. Paint is sticking pretty well. I think the quality is a little bit different too. I used to uh, buy some really cheap, like the first miniatures I bought were some really cheap ones from Reapers Miniatures and they're made of this kind of white, almost rubbery plastic. But one of their selling points is that they come pre-primed. You don't have to, to spray paint a prime on it or anything. Uh, but you kind of do because paint doesn't stick very well to them. I think this one is made by Wiz Kids, So it's a bit different. You know, one thing that this light does for me, though, is that it lets me see on the inside. So I can see some of the stuff that is otherwise hidden in shadow. Sorry. It's kind of awkward with the stream lag, trying to, uh, to see if I'm remaining in frame and in focus. Probably should have cleaned this up a little bit better, but you can kind of see some uh, mold lines and, and marks and stuff. It's all right though. I'm not winning any awards with this. What I will do though, you can see some flashing, maybe. See some flashing on the horns there. It's not gonna get that off. So now we dig into my toolbox. So I bought this a long time ago. Just a pencil case to keep all my brushes and equipment and stuff. Fantastic purchase. <laughs> it was really, really a good idea. All right. The Earthbound Song. This one is really awkward to get on. <laughs> yeah, hand model. Huh. 
Yeah, that looks a little bit better. All right. Oops. Yeah, it's a really ugly mold line there. I should have filled that in. Oh well. Okay, I think I can put that one away. Got this poor, <laughs> this poor brush. It's gonna be my, it's gonna be my rough edges brush. Two hundred thousand points. I, you know, I could just make, I could make a sound that is like a hundred thousand channel points or something specifically for just draining the <laughs> the points uh, let's see is that you it looks like you so I have two identical brushes here because they came with two different sets of paint and they're both this uh, regiment brush and I've been trying to keep one specific for uh, like the shading and whatnot. But now I also treated myself to a whole new set of brushes as well that are tiny detail brushes. But even the smallest brush, which would be this one, I guess. if you can see how absolutely tiny that is. But even that is not quite as small as this insane detail brush, which is just just a few bristles, basically, for the smallest of detail. But uh, this poor brush has seen better days. I don't know what's been going on here, but the paint's been flaking and it's just cracking. But it's kind of nice to have something that tiny. Anyway, where was I? Let's get this thing shaken up. Okay, that definitely looks like it's been mixed a little bit better. It was definitely settling. I don't know, maybe I'll need a little bit more. <laughs> are these are these for makeup? Makeup brushes? I don't know, one, one thing I have definitely learned is that there is quite an overlap in every type of painting. Uh, just the, the idea, like miniatures painting has actually, I think, helped me sort of just learn, not, not just painting in, in general, but for like digital painting, for like how 3D uh, texture painting works, because it's all essentially the same principle, which is uh, it's pretty cool. Anyway, all right. Well, let's see how well this Fire Slayer flesh works. That is mighty dark, isn't it? That is. It is mighty dark. It's okay. We 
we can just highlight it. I don't like what that's doing under there, though. Hmm. Now, I can take a little bit of it off with just a wet brush. That kind of lightens it up a little bit. That's not too bad. Definitely don't want that to pool there. I don't want the skin to be too dark, or else it's going to be really hard to contrast it with the hair. It's not going to stand out as much. I guess that that is hair on the shoulder there. That's why it's so messy. Look. See now, this this picture is really dark, but I guess you can see kind of fur on the shoulder. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is a 3D print of that. Alright. Another thing about the, the contrast paint it's a little bit different than using shades or washes or anything like that is that uh, the pigmentation in this is a lot stronger so it does kind of come off as a little bit thick it's kind of drying to a nice tan though it's fine Actually, that would be that'd be kind of an interesting uh, gimmick to to use for a painting channel. Like every time a new game comes out or something, um, you know, paint up a, a miniature for that. Uh, because there there's a couple, I guess, diorama channels that I watch every now and then, and uh, one of them, I think the channel's called Thalassophobia does a lot of underwater miniatures and dioramas, but uh, he did some actual official tie-in stuff with uh, Subnautica when that came out. Pretty cool stuff. That arm is going to be really hard to get to. So that would help. And there's there's... Uh, somebody who does like uh, Zelda dioramas, so like the, the Breath of the Wild. Um, there's a couple miniature things for that of Link fighting some of the the monsters. The art community on YouTube is is pretty cool. I wasn't totally sold on that color at first, but now that it's drying, it actually looks pretty good. Let's 
see it on stream a little bit. Okay. Are you, are you, weren't you working on a video for that at some point? When was that going to come out? You know, if I just use my finger to wipe away some of this stuff, it gives it a natural highlight. <laughs> Um, did you ever watch, uh, vid Video Copilot? I think I mentioned, mentioned that tutorial site. Alright, I need, I need the light to see the crevices again. Copilot. A lot of the tutorials are older, like older versions of After Effects, and so some of that stuff has probably changed, but uh, while I was in school, I learned more from him than I did from what I was learning in class. He had a really good basic series and a lot of really simple like w once you watch his tutorials you see everyone else like y y you can see it when everyone else is using what they learned from him because a lot of his tutorials are uh, very basic very easy to follow and he also actually sells uh, like assets now like the, the the plugin that allows you to bring three-dimensional models into After Effects and manipulate them because After Effects by default unless unless you know current uh, versions have have changed has only been about a 2.5 D you like not fully three-dimensional but he created a plugin several years ago specifically for bringing 3d models in Pretty cool. Pretty cool website. Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, it's... Um, he, he definitely, at least in, in the old tutorials, like, I haven't looked at his website in a long time, but in the old tutorials, he definitely liked to focus on how to effectively uh, use kind of the like a focal effect and um, like he did a lot of lens flares which aren't terribly useful but um, he, he did a lot of cool stuff that uh, at least shows you what is possible you know all right well I hate to uh, I hate to do highlights on this right now without getting more of the base colors done. So I think 
I will do that. I will leave off on that for a moment. Oops. Get my base brush back out. Welcome back, Park Ninja. I don't think that is the correct color that I used on this thing. In fact, I don't think I want that color at all. It's leather. Leather. Monster brown. Monster brown. That's that's highlighting color. I don't know. I can't. I need this light back on. I guess the hair color and that wood color are the same. I know that the army painter fur brown is not actually fur brown, but I can use it as a highlight. I can use it as maybe as a dry brush. Yeah, we're back. Back in the bar. So how am I going to make this Krampus? <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm not. I can change maybe the cloth into like a red and green Christmassy thing. What even? Let's see, D and D Krampus. It's really more of a black and gray color. Black horns. I guess I could go that route. Alright. Hold on a minute, I will be right back.
painting cam, desktop audio, there we go. Alright, are we still, are we still good? Okay, good. I have no idea when the new songs start. Probably at this most replayed part in the thing. That's the problem with playing these videos that are just the entire soundtrack for three hours as opposed to a playlist. You can't shuffle it. Alright. Let's get this brown out. Definitely more than I need, but all my paints seem to have uh, seem to have hardened up now. That's great. Oh man, this is definitely all right. We're just doing multiple thin layers, and that's fine. It'll make, it'll make it smoother anyway. Brush might be a little too big for this. I can't tell if that's the light reflection or not. It looks like there's still white showing through. I've got, uh, I've got so many miniatures now. I could probably switch to doing a painting channel and do it for quite some time before I even got to all the stuff that I want to do for 3D printing. Seems to be a little bit of a face that I missed out. That was a little too wet. Now it's dripping down in there. I'll have to come back when that's dried off a little. Years ago, I had started to do, or I had wanted to make uh, miniatures, but this was 
well before 3D printers were commercially available to everyone. Um, and so I had purchased a mold making kit. You make like silicone rubber molds and then you pour a two-part epoxy plastic in it. And uh, so I had some Sculpey clay and I tried to make two, two different types of, of sets. Like I was going to make a Space Dwarfs uh, game which was actually going to be kind of a tie-in to one of the apps that I had made. Um, I don't even know if it's still available on the App Store, to be honest with you. Google keeps sending me like policy updates and threatening, like, if you don't update your stuff, then we're going to take your your game off the market. And it's like, well, that's fine, because I haven't done anything with it in over a decade. But anyway, uh, so I was going to make like uh, Space Dwarves and uh, like a Barbarian set. And I don't even... Where are those right now? I probably still got them around here somewhere. But uh, things have now significantly uh, changed <laughs> in, in miniature making. And there's even like a free... What is this thing called? Some gaming. Where is it? Desktop Hero. So I think, I think there's a, a thing called Hero Forge, and then this is, let me look at that, this is like the free open source ver version of it, yeah, Hero Forge. So it's a program where you use basically pre-constructed elements that they have, and then you can put together uh, a miniature, but then this Desktop Hero has done the same thing, and the difference is that you don't have to pay for Desktop Hero. Um, so I think, you know, if, if you see a lot of miniature stuff, uh, like on Kickstarter, it looks very similar to the, the sculpts, especially the faces um, that the, these programs use. But uh, the point being that, you know, there's so much stuff out there now, and you can get, you know, free 3D models to take into Blender and whatnot. There's so much stuff now that people can make their own miniatures lines with minimal effort now and just put it out there which is both good and bad I guess but uh, it makes it more possible for me anyway to someday catch up on my post-college dream of making games again. Sorry, I'm getting way out of frame there. Before I go after that... Things evolve and opportunities lost and all that stuff, but there is always time to try and catch back up on it. And at least you're you're able to uh, you know use the knowledge that you have and whatnot for other things. Like your uh, analysis videos. Because sometimes it feels like a lot of the YouTube analysis stuff is just people copying each other, which is kind of unfortunate.
actually having a skill or some knowledge to differentiate yourself is good. Can I get my elbows back in screen here? So how am I going to darken that hair? Well, and I don't think that that's something that a lot of videos go into either. Um, you know, most of them sort of gloss over things in favor of lore and whatnot. So getting getting like a, a technical analysis of certain things, I think, is a niche that uh, you can definitely find some success in. Did you say that that one was done? Or are you, are you just still working on it and you want it to be done? Boy, it's been an hour and this is as far as I've gotten on this thing. I'm not a fast painter at all. So I've got all these these little paint bottles, right? And then I've put the color of the actual paint on the top of them so I can see. But the tones and the shades come with a red cap, so I can't do that, and it's liquidy anyway. So I've, <laughs> I've got about a dozen of these paints I'm shuffling through now to try and find the actual color that I want. We'll go with this one then. Oh, that's not good. Is it something you ate or just came on all of a sudden? Christmas. <laughs> Just in time.
You didn't go outside and get a chill or anything, did you? Last time I was really sick, that's what happened to me. I was feeling kind of, you know, kind of sick. But then I went outside in the chill wind, and that, that was it. That set me off. Oh. Well. Something. Something undercooked then, maybe? Just a little bit of hair again. I know this kind of blots things out, but I really need it so I can see some of the, the missing detail. Alright, I'll let that dry. What next? Let's see. Kind of like the black banding with the copper. I guess I could do the wooden handle with a wrap on it. Or, whoops, now we can go black. Not that one. Hmm, hmm. Let's not go black, let's go stone. As long as you just take uh, take some cold medicine, just go to bed early, get a full full sleep, put on lots of blankets so you sweat it out. Okay, deep sleep then. I don't know though, like, the cold medicine combination is usually enough to put me, put me down for quite a while. fighting me. Pretty sure every one of these bottles has a plug in it. I don't know how long it's been since I painted. It's been a while. Ah. It causes it to come out too much. Uh, that's my sheet. This is another very earthbound sounding song. Too wet. Oh well. We'll come back at it with another another coat, another pass. I 
I do enjoy painting with a wet palette because it uh, it's really dry in my apartment so my paints would otherwise dry out in this paint tray here but it's kind of also hard to judge how much water is too much water well see I don't know change my mind again later. Yeah, that'll work. One thing that would be nice to get myself if I was going to start doing painting stuff is uh, a chair with a little bit more back support because I'm leaned forward right now and this is probably going to kill me <laughs> in a little bit. It's all right. Compared to how I normally sit, anyway, it's not like this is what's going to cause me to have back issues. What I think, uh, sometimes I feel like what I need is uh, like those hospital tables and just put my computer on that and then sit in my recliner. Just go complete veg. You know what, there's this tail back here, this whole time. Uh, I'm, I'm going to come back to the tail. Yeah, the uh, Games Workshop put this out. Well, you know, Citadel, but Games Workshop put this out a few years ago. It's actually been really handy, because what most people do is they'll take a paint pot if it gets empty, like, uh, like this, and then they'll put, like, sticky tack on the bottom or whatever and put their miniatures on that, or, like, a piece of wood or whatever. Whatever they can get, but this is actually really useful. At least when when it latches on, because that that spring is there for like the the round bases, and then you just latch it in there. But sticky tack works just fine too. I definitely spent a little too much of my disposable income on all this stuff at one point. Like this water pot, you know, like uh, this is another Citadel water pot. You can just have a coffee cup or whatever, right? But this one in particular, aside from like the, the little uh, divots here, you know, for resting your brush on, that's really nice. It's got these lines in the back so that you can you move your brush up it and get a point on it. And what I really like, though, is that there's these ridges on the inside and on the bottom. So you can kind of flick your, your brush against them, and then it gets the paint off of it a little bit nicer. You know, so I was watching some uh, customization videos of Gunpla the other day. 
those Gundam guys really get into it. Like custom making parts with plastic card and all that stuff. Like that's that's a little beyond the hobby for me. Some really cool stuff though. Like I like when they do the Gundams uh, where they sort of drill out parts and then they put LEDs in there so things light up and stuff. That's really cool. But yeah, that's uh, not to mention the expense. Like Warhammer people joke about how expensive that hobby is, but goddamn, the Gundam kits, especially like the fancy Gundam kits, man. Years and years and years and years ago, there was a toy store downtown in my hometown that would do uh, imports, uh, a lot of imported toys, and so there was a lot of Japanese models, and uh, I guess technically one of the first miniatures I ever painted, or models I ever painted, was some, I say generic, but it's not generic, like there's definitely a, a series attached to it, but there was some mecha toy that I got and uh, oh man looking back at it now awful because you know I didn't I didn't do anything that you're supposed to do with the models like clean up the flashing and all that stuff and uh, like the the paint I used was enamel paint, because you know that's what uh, like the airplane guys would use and whatnot. So it's model painting, right? But it uh, I definitely appreciate acrylic painting more just because of what you can do with it. Gonna have to gonna have to get those details again actually might this might actually work for highlighting maybe if I mixed in a little slightly darker color it actually does kind of work for a highlight color makes a little bit too light though <laughs> nice Yeah, Games Workshop, well, Citadel, same thing. Um, their, their tool line is a little pricey and unnecessary, but I actually do like the things that they, they've got. So, like, this paint pot, I've got uh, bought a lot of stuff from them, actually. So, like, this thing, it's... I, I thought this was metal. This is actually plastic. It's a texture brush, so you can scoop out, like, the the texture paint that dries and cracks and stuff. I got that, whereas before I was using these, these little silicone um, sculptors, which are actually nice, but this is this is a little bit better tool. Um, but then I bought, so I bought these clippers, which you don't need, because you can get actual same kind of clippers, flat clippers, for much cheaper. Got a little uh, pin vise drill, but for for like the flashing and mold lines, for the flashing and mold lines, this thing, this one is actually worthwhile, because whereas the X-Acto knife is nice for getting like little bits of flashing and whatnot on sort of the rubbery stuff, this thing is actually really good for scraping out mold lines, because it's just a solid piece of metal. But if you've got you know hard plastic. You can just scrape it off, and uh, it, it 
creates more of a smooth transition, I find, than I can get with the X-Acto knife. Maybe I'm just clumsy with the X-Acto knife, but I make a lot of divots cutting things out with the knife. <laughs> Get all my tools back in the box. Another thing, I've been keeping an old toothbrush around because I've discovered, and it's not really a secret, but uh, one way to get your acrylic paints off of, of miniatures is to dip them in isopropyl alcohol, and then you can just scrub it off with a toothbrush. Yeah, yeah, no, like, that that tool is excellent for scraping things off. Like, if you have a really big nub, then, you know, you need to trim that down a little bit still. But if, if it's just, like, a bump or something, or if it's, like, you know, where the plastic just left kind of like a, a hole and you got to smooth things out, I, I would definitely recommend that tool. If you're going to spend money on any of their expensive tools, that one at least is worthwhile. But if you if you want to see some uh, ham-fisted work here, hold on a minute. Let me get this. Okay. So like these guys, right? So this is a, a package that came with 10 figures, but it came with enough parts for 20 with the exception of like the body. And so what I did is I bought some, uh, let me see if I can find that. Man, I've got too many tools in this box. So, I don't know, I don't think they make this anymore, this particular brand. Um, this company still makes this stuff, but what it is, is it's it's um, basically reusable mold. Um, how the hell do I get this out of here? Uh, so what you do, why can't I get this out of here? What you do um, is you put it in boiling water so it softens up. Jesus, I can't get this out of here. <laughs> well, okay, you're just gonna have to believe me on this. But it, it's basically these little these little bars, um, and then you you heat it up, boiling water, whatever, shape it into a mold, and then. You can use uh, like green stuff or milliput or whatever. Um, they don't make this either. I, I bought this off of uh, Amazon. This is much cheaper than other green stuff. And of course they don't sell it in this quantity anymore. Uh, but then you can push it into the mold. Um, so so you, you warm this up, make it into a mold, then you put it into ice water to freeze it and it hardens. And then so you can, act, you, you can use it again as a mold. Um, and then you just have to heat it up and then you can reshape it again. So it's, it's really cool. Um, but anyway, where that comes into to these guys, right? So I had 10 miniatures, but I had enough parts for 20 of them. So I made bodies uh, for the others and just kind of bootlegged the rest of it. And you can kind of see uh, the legs are terrible. And some of these, they're, they're really bad. And most of that is just because... Like, I tried uh, cutting these out with the, the green stuff. Um, so, like, I, I would put green stuff into the mold, push it together, and then they would it would squeeze out, and there'd be a, a lot of flashing. But here's, uh... 
the hell did I just put you? Oh, this one. So here's here's what the legs are supposed to look like with the claws and whatnot. And then here's <laughs> the the green ones that came out after I butchered them trying to use an X-Acto knife to shave off all the terrible flashing. But, uh, let's see, maybe I can get that in focus a little better here with some lighting. So, like, I've got... I've got, uh, about ten bootlegged figures that have all this, this really awful kind of legging stuff going on. But from a distance, you know, from a distance they look okay. Well, <laughs> from a distance on the camera they're gonna blur because it doesn't autofocus. You can't really tell, but, like, you know, it, it, um, it saved me, basically, from just wasting all these bits and parts and whatnot, and, and I doubled the army of these things. Um, not that one. Yeah, I don't know. I've got, I've got more in there, but yeah. It, um... It, 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 the thing about the green stuff is, though, that it's not the same hardness as, as this kind of plastic. And so I think that's part of the reason why it was so terrible trying to cut them apart. Because I couldn't really scrape anything or, or whatever without it just completely kind of taking chunks out of the plastic. But... I got the grass falling off of everything now. Put those over here. Okay, back to the Minotaur. I think I will add a little bit more. Just going to add a little bit more darkness here. Kind of give it a layer to make the transition. Gotta be careful though, otherwise it's gonna dry shiny. Uh, I guess. <laughs> I don't remember that part. Stillness in the rain, Abigail's melody, yeah. Get really impatient for this stuff to dry. I don't know if it's be dark enough, or I'm gonna have to give it one more. What is the cutscene? Star Watcher? I don't know. I don't remember much about that series at all, as I've said multiple times. Okay. Well, what to work on next. I guess I can do a little bit of red. Just straight red, pure red, dragon red. I think that might be a little too much. 
Let's go with some pure red. Did you put that on the Discord? Oh, okay. Because I don't have, I don't have the Discord open. It's gonna kill the camera. Oh. Is that a the Gundam kit? Oh. Yeah, I think I think the metallics. I'd like I don't know what paint they use. Probably is some kind of enamel paint, but I think metallics uh, enamel doesn't really doesn't really work too well chips a lot because it's probably the same well I mean I'm, I'm sure it's a more expensive version but like any kind of action figure that has metallic looking parts will always flake after a time transformers were notorious for that oh yeah they did make a a game like that didn't they same as when they did like the the Zelda one and uh, Dragon Quest ones. All right. That is definitely plugged. Oh boy. Paint is starting to come out the top there. should really be doing the belt first actually in fact I should do the armor first too just looking at where all that stuff is actually coming out of alright I think I'll use the same color for that belt Hold on a minute, let me see what this thing's. I guess it's the same kind of color. That's all right, we can simplify this. Make sure I'm painting together. Uh, so I did get the, the two-point hospital um, for steam. I've been spending time trying to catch up to where we were, because, of course, save games are not compatible. Yeah, I, I did see that message from you. Which is unfortunate, because now that I have access to all the other stuff, uh, there's, like, community quests or something? Like, research quests? And so now I need someone to, to help complete them. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, that's okay, because it looks like... See, is it just the friends that have uh, the game, or is it, like, everybody in your friends list? Because... Ah, damn it. Um, it, uh, like, it gave me a whole bunch of recommendations for people, and I was like, I don't know if they even have it. Uh, this is Sam's Band, the electronic version. I keep hitting my microphone against this stupid camera light. Oh well, that works. I guess I can use that against the bracers then, too. Yeah, I don't know. Um, when I when I first started the game, apparently there had been a research that had already been done, but I, it unlocked like a fire and ice fountain. But then there was another one that started after that and uh, there's two quests in there that won't complete until someone else does them well this is all over the place this one's kind of hard to see I need the assistance of the lamplight again. I think I will change it from... There, just put it back on bright. But, um... Like, it, it seems like I was definitely missing out on, like, half the game. For whatever reason, the GOG.com version was not connecting. Although, you know, like, all the... the grids and graphs and all that data stuff, like, it's not terribly useful. It seems like it's actually really hard to, uh, to make those show information that matters. This is, this is delicate in here. Guess I should have done these first. Um, yeah, the, the Policies tab does work. Um, what's kind of annoying is that that one where it's like always pass people through, by default in every new hospital that always turned off. But, I don't know, like, it, it, I guess it's not what I was expecting. and I, I don't know what I was expecting, but it, it's not really showing too much uh, that can help in my situations, unless it unlocks more stuff over time. Oh, sorry, that was absolutely out of frame. <laughs> Yes. 
It is too wet. wasn't one of the more complicated models that I've got. It shouldn't be taking me this long. And after this, uh, I've been trying to, uh, to clean up the apartment and get all the dishes and all that stuff. But, obviously I've not been doing that, although I did manage to get the place all vacuumed and mopped and whatnot. But if I want to make myself Christmas dinner tomorrow, I've got to do dishes today. I was considering trying to set up the camera in uh, the kitchen, too, and, and get started on doing the cooking channel videos that I've been putting off for so long. Just start the new year with all my new channel ideas. I may as well, right? Like, doing, uh, like I already missed out on, on Thanksgiving, but doing uh, Christmas and New Year's dinners, I'm, if I want to do those again, I'm going to have to wait a year. So now's the time, I guess. Not that it's going to help anyone, because it's going to be after the fact, but. If I'm going to go to the trouble of actually making a fancy dinner for the first time in years. It's not really fancy, like fancy for me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's still mostly box stuff. And uh, when I have access to the Discord again and it's not going to kill my camera or the stream, uh, I'll post what I made for Thanksgiving. Pretty simple stuff. Yeah, I don't... If, if I can't make food within half an hour-ish, uh, it just doesn't get made. So, like, my dinners are very, very simple. So putting in more than that amount of time is... I guess that constitutes as a special dinner for me. I guess I could lower the intensity of this light so it doesn't completely blot everything out. Yeah, I just I I could not do that. When I when I moved out into this apartment and uh, tried to get my life back on track, I tried to make an effort of not eating out all the time, so I would make dinner and whatnot but over time you know I would just get home <clears throat> and I wouldn't you know if I got myself to cook as soon as I came home then that would be something but if I sat down which I increasingly did uh, afterward after I got back home and gave myself like an hour or whatever um, then you know all bets were off I just absolutely could not get myself to uh, to make anything with any amount of time. So my meals became increasingly simplified. And uh, there were some, some bad points where I wouldn't eat at e eat anything at home at all. Um, like I was, and even until recently, honestly, I was spending way too much time eating out but I think a part of what drove that was that you know, when I 
was unemployed when I first moved here and, and started out, you know, I didn't ha <coughs> have the money, so I, I would make food. But when I had a lot of disposable income, you know, to the point where I was buying miniatures and board games and all that stuff again, just like, yeah, you know what, five dollars here, five, and and that's the other thing too, is it was the heyday of the five dollar meals, which uh, they haven't had for a few years anymore. But uh, just going out and getting like a full meal for five bucks, like hell yeah. Why on earth would I? spend the time making something when I can just get something super cheap because I'm not really a foodie at all like uh, honestly I kind of find eating to be a hassle a lot of the times so that's I'm out of frame again so I fall into traps sometimes where I'm not really taking care of myself the best Okay, well, I guess I can do the metallics now before my red paint dries out. Uh, plate metal, plate metal, gun metal, actually, before I let that go. There. Get that one covered. Is this darker? I think this might be darker. Well, I, I also tend to uh, purchase, because I, I cannot stand going out amongst the people <laughs> and the public anymore, um, I usually only go get groceries once a month. So, like, you know, I, I get a whole bunch of food and then try and, and work through it uh, throughout the month. And the, the closer I get to the end of my food stash, the more I find myself going out. Well, it's, it's actually just a little ball inside the paint here to shake it up. I think it's more noticeable in this one because metallic paints are more liquidy. Chinese. That's almost the... Uh, the Jewish Christmas tradition, eating Chinese food. We don't really have like an actual takeaway Chinese place here anymore. Like there's a few Chinese restaurants and there's a, a buffet, but there's not really a place you can just go and, and get takeaway. It's been a while since I've had Chinese. Oh. That's not good. Why is that developing? Oh, it's just a bubble. Okay. Oops. Yeah, um, that's a, a very weird thing. I mean, fried chicken in general, karage, is a pretty popular Japanese dish. So I guess, you know, KFC uh, does really well there. They also have a completely different menu <laughs> than, uh, uh, you know, American KFC and whatnot. Items that we would absolutely never find there. But yeah, um, KFC is, is actually like a, not, not fancy, but like you have business meals there. There is a... There is a hole in my bottle. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> right. 
it's just interesting to to see how uh, well you know Christmas in general in Japan um, is treated more like how we treat New Year's and then New Year's is treated more like how we treat Christmas over there but uh, I, I always found it fascinating like the I, I don't know if it's all over the world or, or just the, the Jewish communities in America and I don't even know if it's in every city in general or just like New York um, but like when I learned about uh, the the Jewish uh, tradition of eating Chinese because during Christmas the only people not celebrating were the the Jewish community and the Chinese community and the Chinese restaurants were open during Christmas so <laughs> Jewish people would just go spend uh, Christmas eating out at, at Chinese restaurants that's just a, a fascinating little thing that you you, you know like it's just uh, an emergent thing that uh, becomes a tradition I got it on. I'm really bad about overpainting. Or overbrushing, I guess. And also, this light, I don't know. I'm having a love hate relationship with this side light because it's really nice for picking out the details, but it also washes out some of the details. plays Dungeons and Dragons? That's cool. Does she play Dungeons and Dragons or does she play the Sword World uh, Japanese uh, tabletop over there? D&D &D has sort of become the generic name for role playing now. Now that it's gone mainstream. And boy, that's an interesting change, too. Because when I was a kid, the only people down the role-playing book aisle were like 30-something balding, geeky old men. And, uh, like, everything that was nerdy about my childhood is now mainstream. Collecting figurines and playing video games, board games, tabletop games. Oh, nice. Well, you know, I mean, like, I, I definitely think part of the appeal uh, to that, uh, to role-playing games and, and, and Dungeons and & Dragons and stuff like that, is that it is a, a social thing. You know, so you can join a group and make some friends that way. Same way that, you know, people made friends playing uh, World of Warcraft. And other... MMOs and the like. Oh man, and it is big business now too. Especially like board games, like specialty board games. You used to have to be like a real nerd to get specialty board games. And now, like, not only are there board games for everything, 
people making them on Kickstarter and whatnot. Now they have their own DLC content. Like, you have expansion packs for board games. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, I'm, I'm actually surprised that Monopoly... Well, maybe they have. They probably haven't. I just haven't paid attention to Hasbro. But, like, Monopoly selling, you know, packs of uh, tokens... So all the tokens that they take out of the game over the years, you can just add more and have whatever whatever you want. It's getting out of focus a little far away. One of the disadvantages to uh, manually putting things into focus is that it won't autofocus if I veer away from that. Maybe I'll put a little bit of rust on this one. I don't really use that too much. Uh, speaking of Resident Evil board game, um, yes, that, that does actually look good. Um, the Yogg's cast did a video on that a long time ago. Uh, well, maybe not too long ago. I don't remember how long ago exactly, but that looked fun as hell because <laughs> what they ended up doing was they got uh, the party split between two rooms and there was a horde of zombies in between them and nobody had any ammunition or weapons except one gun. And so somehow, I guess the mechanics allow you to pass weaponry between people. So like at, at the very last room with all these zombies moving in, um, and, and they're down to being down to one last weapon. They were playing hot potato with the gun, tossing it from player to player to shoot their zombies, and they actually won the game. It was freaking awesome. <laughs> it was really fun to watch, actually. Okay, I guess I'll do highlighting in brass. Plates. I guess I need a little bit more here. Ugh. I don't, I don't know how that happened. The crack on the side of the bottle there? I don't think I've got any more of that either. Oh well. Metallic paints are easy to come by. I don't know, I've I got my fair amount of uh, board games as well. And card games. So, you know, back in God, the 90s, I guess, uh, card games were everything. Like, everything had a collectible card game attached to it. Uh, but I was mostly into, like, the Star Wars card game. Um, and then I got into Magic a little bit. I never played anything, just because I never knew anyone who played, because, you know, again, it was for nerds, but um, I definitely collected. And then, well, years and years later, uh, when I had uh, disposable income a few years ago, just everything that uh, I couldn't afford when I was a kid now was available to me as an adult, I got back into collecting Magic. Uh, mostly with the expansion, Ixian expansion, which uh, had like dinosaurs and Aztecs and vampire conquistadors and just like everything about it. It was like, holy shit, this is awesome. I'm going to get this. And then, of course, you know, the floodgates were open and I started getting them because there was like an Egyptian expansion and there's just a whole bunch of stuff and I spent way too much money. So now I, I like, I'm more than, more than doubled my collection of, of magic cards, which now just, you know, are there collecting dust, because what else am I going to do with them? But, uh, you know, I've got, I've got Battletech miniatures now, even though I don't really play the game, <laughs> and I've got two bookshelves worth of board games, 
some of which are actually pretty fun, and others, you know, they looked cool. Yeah, I was, um, I was a little too old for the Pokemon stuff, um, but my brother for sure was into the card collecting. And he actually bit the bullet and sold all of his Pokemon stuff a while back. But he had toys, comic books. Oh, it definitely, definitely is a money sink, yes. And the thing is, especially for my age group, now that so many things are geared towards the nostalgia crowd, you know, um, there's now, like, just an absolute market for all that stuff. Like a third-party resale market, you know. And so now people, people just buy, well, especially for, like, magic. People just buy so much magic just to get super, I don't know, I, I don't even know how you price cards, really. But I didn't, I didn't, you know, understand it when I was in the 90s, either. Um, but, like, they'll, they'll buy tons of cards specifically for one that sells for hundreds of dollars, and it's just kind of like, wow. Although, oh man. Oh, your dad did too? <laughs> um, you know, I, I say that. So, Battletech, uh, there's there's the new Battletech game that is coming out that I've been purchasing the, the minis for, but I also found a wholesale website several years ago that sold one from WizKids, same people who made this miniature, um, is uh, the Mech Warrior game, and it, like super cheap. But you look on Amazon, eBay, whatever, a box of those things is still going for like ten bucks. And so, again, you know, the curse of disposable income. I was like, well, shit, I can buy a huge crate of these things unopened, and if I put them on eBay to resell, I would make like seven hundred dollars profit just turning around these toys. Of course, I never did. <laughs> I never, never listed them. I still have the box here, but like I fell into the trap too myself of just like, hey, there's money to be made in nostalgia here. I remember when I was a kid going to the fair they would have um, toy fairs every now and then and uh, so you, you know you'd go and you'd find the the people that had all like the the old McDonald's toys and I would always be looking for transformers to collect transformers were another thing that was just super pricey even even then you know, like they, they were only five to ten years away from when they'd actually just been sold, but Transformers are very pricey as well. All right, now I think I can get into the red here, now that my paint is all dried up.
It is pretty crazy though, just how long some of those franchises have been around, like Pokemon. Just thinking about you know my childhood and, and especially my brothers, because he was he was right in, because I, I was probably a teenager when those came out, but he was right in the age group. Ah, damn it! Just uh, okay. You need to come off the stand here. You know, he he and I had like the red and blue. I had red, he had blue, and I remember just sitting in the car one vacation with the cable linked together playing each other. But just after all these years it's still going. <laughs> they still keep adding new Pokemon. Yeah, I just saw I saw that actually that uh, Ash finally finally got to the end and he's still 10 years old right he's or like 11 or something time has not moved for him Washes out the color. This is this is a much more vibrant red than what is showing up on stream right now. Oh God, how do I even get in there? How do I even paint that? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't... How many Pokemon are there anymore? Because, like, obviously there were the original 150, and then I bought gold. I don't think I ever finished gold, actually. My brother bought silver, so that added another however many. But with all the, all the releases since then, it's got to be a couple thousand of them right now, huh? Really? Only 250? Oh. Yeah, so they added 100. A thousand and eight, Jesus. See, how, you, how are you going to have a Pokemon song about that? Right? Like the original Pokemon song when you could sing all 150 of them. How are you going to have a, a thousand of them? And the, the strategizing, too, is what gets me, like... They do put them out pretty frequently. But, like, the, the people who, you know, grew up and then got really into the metagaming of Pokemon battles and would do, like, all the stats and you need to learn this technique and all the, you know, the crazy stuff. Like, with a thousand Pokemon, how the hell can you even do that? How can you... How can you parse through the stats of a thousand Pokemon and be like, okay, actually... Of all the fire types, this is the best one with this combo, and then, you know, like, man, that's just a little... That goes a little beyond obsessive for me. But, 
I mean, I guess that's true of most games. Like, even when I was playing World of Warcraft, I was mostly a solo player, so I just built my characters however I wanted to play, and it was not always optimal, but it was fun to play. get obsessed about that stuff though I think that's one thing that I miss from growing up with with games was just being able to play a game and sort of figure it out how you want you know like I, I played the original Starcraft back in the day never online and competitively but like watching it, especially, I guess I started watching uh, videos when StarCraft II came out, or was coming out, and they were hyping that up. And just watching competitive StarCraft with, like, the build orders, and you know, this, that, and the other, and all that. Just the metagaming aspect, I think, has really ruined it for me. Just gaming in general. You know, like... Because it's all so samey. Like, I think that was a major complaint that I had with uh, the way World of Warcraft turned out. Yeah, you know, when that game first started, you could just build the character you wanted and, and have some fun. But then it was like, okay, well, there's an optimal way to do this. And so everyone who got into PvP was like, well, you, you know, they're all the same. Like, every, every build looks the same, and it's just... You need to grind for this armor and that armor. It's like, why, why? Just... And I've, I've experienced that in my own playthroughs, my own Let's Plays on the channel every now and then with commenters, especially on, on like the city building stuff. Um, you know, like the Zeus and the Emperor videos and whatnot. <sighs> Every now and then you get the, the comments of, like, well, you know, if you if you built more of these, uh, you wouldn't have the, the supply issues with that and, and stuff. But, like, I've always played those games minimally, and most city builders I try and do that minimally. So, like, yes, I could build a dozen of the furnaces or whatever, but I don't want to. Because I think it looks bad, and I, I only want my city to be this little city on the hill or whatever. I do not appreciate what metagaming has done to gaming in general. Because I guess f for me, gaming has always been something, and especially in a, as an adult, has been something I do as a hobby to relax. Like, competitive gaming doesn't excite me at all. That's actually pretty good coverage for that red. I don't think I really need to do a second coat on this. Do a thin one anyway, I guess. Covering my bases. Yeah, you know, I mean, I know that I wasted tons of materials. Like, I think that that right there is probably the most common comments on. Uh, my play critique is 
when I just have all of these workers sitting idle with uh, goods in their carts, you know, and people are like, build more warehouses so that these workers are moving and, and they're not just sitting idle and, and all this stuff. And it's like, I'm not trying to min-max a goddamn city building game. I could do that, obviously. I'm not going to, though. Same thing with like the speed running and uh, just like all, all of that side of things. Like 100% no hit, <laughs> you know, any percent complete, whatever. Like, I, I don't care. Like, I appreciate watching someone who's good at a game. But I'll never get into that myself because, holy crap, why would I do that? I should leave this pot out. I keep getting back into it. I think I'm done and I'm not. yet. Uh, I guess the trim. The bandaging. Okay, let's see. Skeleton bone. Yeah, we'll go with skeleton bone. Squeaking, creak in my chair. I don't. I. I do not have a microphone-friendly chair anymore. Three game. Uh, of what? <laughs> well, isn't there? Like, didn't somebody do uh, uh, an El or not an Elden Ring, a Dark Soul playthrough using only their toes on the controller or something like that? Like, somebody did a, like a blindfold challenge or something like that? I mean, that's impressive, I guess, but like...
pad backwards and upside down. You know why? You know why it's doing this? It's because the ball in there gets pushed down into the neck of the bottle. Way too much paint for what I'm trying to paint with this color. Also a little bit too watery too. Yes, I am, I am offended by your use of the word dick. How, how could you? My channel is a family Christian channel with pure language only. <laughs> so offended. But yes, no, you're right. It is uh, the competitive side of things. is just <laughs> a little too much. I wish there was another color I could use this on. Right. I don't know, back in the day, really the only thing that I remember wanting to learn stuff like that was mostly for skipping parts of the game you know like you'd, and, and a lot of the times I was just exploiting a bug like being able to uh, clip through walls in Mega Man or something like that but like competitively being like I can beat this faster than you well I don't care Mermaid song. Yep. Okay. Let's, uh, hmm. You know what? Let's just use this shade rather than getting another color. Oh boy. I'm gonna have to add a lot of water to this. Maybe that's too much water now. Too much water. That's all right. Let's see what this does. Yeah. A brown. I mean, this is kind of brown, but a fleshier brown color probably would have looked better. But it works. It's really sunk into the recesses on that. Okay. The little the pipes to this song.
this. Oh, of course that part fades out. That sounds like another homage to Earthbound. Earthbound Soundstone. It's not the best version of this. Zero. This is a different song. Well, anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it's time. Bring out the bronze. I wish I had a brass. Actually, no, that's that's too bright. I do not. What the hell is this? Mephiston red. Got some colors in here. I didn't remember. Actually, I learned that instead of the up and down motion for like your paint pots and your uh, like spray paint cans and whatnot, it's actually better to swirl it around, swirl the ball around so it creates a little vortex inside the bottle. That actually mixes it better. Deadlines on fan fiction? Oh, I see. Okay. Well, let's see if I can get some paint out of this without squirting the entire bottle on here. Oh boy, that is thick. That is... That is uh, thick paint. I'm gonna have to shake that one better. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that one. Okay, it's time for Tiny Brush. paint. That is not good. Yeah, no. All right. Okay, all these little little tiny details. Again, maybe I should wait on this until the very end, but now let's let's start with the brazier here.
I have too many varied interests. I've been uh, really bad about getting myself to focus on, on any particular thing, but I wanted to, to do some writing myself. I've had ideas for a couple of different books. And I keep writing ideas down too, but mostly in like just a couple sentence form things that aren't fully articulated and and whatnot. But uh, like I've got enough now that I could probably actually get started on a book. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, it's such a great idea, right? Like, I had the last two years basically sitting on my ass to do anything. New channels, make a game, write books, whatever. And now here I am. <laughs> Back to... Oh, yes, the audiobook reading. Oh, you know what I... Ah, oh, damn. Gonna miss out on uh, reading The Night Before Christmas. I don't know. I don't know when that's going to get done. I need to go back. Go back and paint in my little covers. On the side that I did it. the 1992 soap opera version of whatever this song is. Exploring the vibrant world movie theme. So I've been uh, spending most of my evenings lately watching Mystery Science Theater 3000 uh, because most of the episodes are on YouTube somewhere. I don't know if you guys ever saw that program, if they ever had it over there. But man, some of those videos, some of the movies they watch. There's a real nostalgia vibe for uh, like some of the music and, and uh, just like the, the clothing and hairstyles and whatnot. Although it is pretty rare when they do anything that isn't made in the 50s or 60s. This is uh, movie theater closing time. In the Stardew track. Collecting some of my paints for a while, apparently. Is it? Thank you, computer. I need updates. How the hell do I get that? Alright. I need some assistance with the light.
I honestly don't even remember a theater in Stardew Valley. Was there a theater? Once again, that is just a, a fire and forget series. Given, you'd think I'd remember it given how long it was. How much of my time that actually took up as a series, but I don't. I don't remember a damn thing about it. Okay, I think I need to take you off of that. This is incredibly awkward. See, now if this was an actual miniature, that arm likely would have come off separately and then been something I would have glued on later and uh, I would have thus painted it separately and then glued it on. with it and then paint over the mistakes. Oh boy. So it's the rest of these that are really going to be a pain in the butt. I think, oh, there goes my, there goes my elbow rest sock. Just fine until we got to there. I believe there is a simulator for miniature painting, actually, now that I think about it. for everything now. Oh, that's a little too much of a doll up there. You know it would be cool if I... I don't. I don't have a sharpie for this. I've seen some techniques uh, that people use. They use the metallic sharpies for really fine metallic detail work. Sure could use one of those right now. a bit of a mess. Gee, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. The paint is so thick it's actually sticking up. Three-dimensional painting. Right, I gotta get a little bit of... a little bit of water in this. Thin that down. Well, it's not per 
perfect. It's actually really hard to see. Probably would actually be easier to do this trying to dry brush it. Maybe with the side of the brush instead. Just get the, the raised areas. Oh yeah, that's much much easier. Absolutely out of the uh, frame this whole time. <laughs> All right. front there. Try and clean that up a little. Or just do it again. Now see, this makes it look like it's got brass all the way around. So I guess I could maybe do a little bit there. Maybe if I kind of wear it off and do like a... that's coming up on the camera or not. It's kind of adding a little bit of a metallic sheen to it. But maybe if I turn this thing off, I'll be a little bit easier to see there. Just going to wipe some of that. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. I don't know how to get the rest of this thing. No one's going to be able to see on the inside there. Least of all you, because I got the thing in the front of the camera. Um, just going to feather it on there. It's actually really hard to focus on uh, doing this and try and look at the stream every now and then to make sure that I'm getting things. Okay, I kind of like that. 
Um, you know what? We're going to do one last thing. To the very bottom of the hair. Just to kind of give it a little bit of a transition there. All right. Well, it's been three hours. Uh, should we go a little longer today because of today or what? stuff that I've made a mistake on. Okay, well that part, I think I'll just paint over that and uh, do it again from scratch. That one's a little bit off. Okay, well, what else needs to be done? I guess I can maybe do the teeth in this color. Make another use of that. That just looks like he's got a gap in his teeth there. I think that's actually mostly a mold line. Uh, I think I'll wait and I'll do like an orange or a red or something for the, the eyes. But I'll make that really bright there. Once again, I'm out of out of camera. Okay. Hey Hazard. Ah uh, yes, it is a mini minotaur. Not the miniest of minotaurs though. I've got some pretty small figures. How do I want to paint that? I guess I could use monster brown. I've got to have some kind of yellowy thing here. Desert yellow? Desert yellow might be interesting. I don't think I've ever used this paint. That might be a good base color.
yeah, it uh, it definitely works. I mean, it's let me take it off here. So it it has the expander. So like if I was to put that in, it holds on to the the bases. But the base for this guy or that came with him is not only flimsy as hell; it's also too big to fit in there. So I'm not gonna not gonna use that one, and we just got some poster tack on there. But I definitely like that. real quick, so I'll be right back. back I guess my microphone is on the whole time okay 
Come on, paint. No. We will see. I've never used this paint before, so we'll see how well this comes out the bottle. Like a mustard. It's okay. Still looks a little bit thin and watery, but whatever. All right. Let's get out this brush here. It's time. I can probably put some of these away. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it actually does seem like it was primed, which is good. Kind of a pain. I mean, I am I'm at a point where I cannot prime any of these miniatures. I actually, anticipating that I was going to do some painting this winter, um, I actually did pre-prime a bunch of miniatures uh, during the fall before temperatures were too bad so I could go out and, and spray paint. But I do not have facilities where I can paint right now, or spray paint anyway. Okay, um, well... See if I can do this without getting paint all over the thing. Actually, I wonder. Let's put this, put this on that, and then we'll stick that. <laughs> this sounds like uh, Mario RPG. The woods. Okay, that works. All right. Yeah, that's um, it's kind of a pain having to have a place where you can just let stuff dry and air out and. Oh boy, that is incredibly watery. All right. Maybe I need to add a little bit more to it. Clearly the medium and the pigment have separated a bit. Okay. Gotta shake it so hard. Everything else is rattling. Definitely looks a little thicker. All right. Maybe I can mix that together just a bit. All right. Well, I mean that is definitely a mustard yellow. That is definitely not a rock color. So we're gonna have to play paint mixing to make this look good. Definitely should have gone with more of a beige color, I think. Oh well. Alright. Welcome back. What was dessert? Music is all over the place in the soundtrack, isn't it?
Yeah, I don't know what the English word for that is either because I don't know what that is. Let's look. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yule log. I think over here we'd call that a Swiss roll. Or something similar, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know if it's called I don't know if it's called Swiss roll because it is or because uh, of marketing. Like I, I don't know which came first. But uh, the snack cake company Little Debbie's sells them as Swiss rolls, so that's the only reason I know about it. Is that name? Ooh, ice cream cake. Fancy, fancy. All right, this isn't going to work. I tried to change how I was sitting, and it doesn't quite work out. All right, well, so I'll wait for that, and then I guess I'll apply flesh wash to it. Doesn't appear to be a ball in this one. <laughs> ASMR wash gloop. I guess they're both that way. All right. Well, the paint is still a little wet on this one. I guess I can come back on that. All right, so what do I want to do? I think for... are we done? Oh, we're done. Okay. Uh, so what do we listen to next? I was really digging the, uh, the Animal Crossing, but yeah, you're right. I, I'm not sure how the soundtrack is going to work out. What about Cuphead? Well, Cuphead and his Pelmon man, they like to roll the dice. They, they got a lot of... Okay, most of them are instrumental. There we go. Should have been doing this one the whole time. Actually, very appropriate Christmas Christmassy music. All right. Well, I don't know how that is going to to mesh with the flesh wash. See, the thing is, on this kind of a base, I would want to use uh, some of these texture paints, but they don't. The, the color doesn't match. Um, well, actually. Um, I guess I was using it on this base. I think I've got a better one. Nope. 
کمن Okay, so like this. I'd probably use this texture paint, but as you can see, that's that's a pretty glaring... Well, maybe you can't. The, the colors are actually pretty muted on uh, the stream, but this is, this is very much a mustard yellow to me. So I don't know how I'm going to make that color mix. Yeah, yeah, it's a space marine. I could actually... I'll, I'll show you what I have painted. So this is this is from a set. This is like one of the earliest sets of, of minis that I bought. Um, it comes with a bunch of Space Marines and orcs, and I never painted up the orcs, but I'll show you my painted collection here at the end. Going back to the uh, the selling or reselling of toys and miniatures, the reason I bought that set was because it was uh, it was cheap. And looking at eBay, um, I figured I could clip them and just sell like the the Terminators or the Space Marines or the Captain or the Orcs and, and just sell them as pieces because those alone actually are pretty expensive. So I was looking at like doubling my money and then I just kept them and painted them instead. But I still actually could do the Orcs. I don't really need an Orc army. Actually, where are those? I have some very old Space Orcs. Like, I don't know what edition Maybe, maybe second edition? I don't know. But like, some original Games Workshop Space Orcs. Back when they were still called Space Orcs. Um, I have no idea what those are worth. I picked those up at a thrift store. Many, 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 many years ago. Someone throw them out, the fools. Let's see how well this works. Okay, I might need to do a second coat of this. It's not very heavy. In fact, I wonder if maybe what I did on his flesh would work better, the fire, fire slayer flesh. The problem with using washes is it takes forever to let them dry. And uh, the army paint... <coughs> Army Painter brand, in particular, has a gloss to them, so it's not something I really want to just dip in there and saturate everything with, because I don't really want a shiny rock. Now that works. I mean, it kind of, kind of darkens it down a little bit. Have to let that dry. Okay, so what else? Well, I guess I can... You know what? Let's just continue using the... Uh, uh, before it's all gone. Let's continue using the strong tone. I guess I can just add more. Typically... Um, for the, the silvers, you're supposed to use like a, a black. This is kind of a blackish brown. But that's okay because it kind of adds a little bit of a warm, rusty color to it. Actually, this brush works pretty well for, for this. It's got a nice coverage area. I think that works out well, actually. Especially for the character. Because it does... I don't know if that's showing up on camera or not, but it's leaving behind kind of a little bit of a brown residue, so it does look a little rusty.
Oh, 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 oh geez. The whole thing almost fell off. Oh, wait, did I just paint that one? I just painted that one. Yeah, I think that's... I think that's far more appropriate of a color. In fact, I'll just dab a little along the armor as well. Yeah, that actually turned out all right. Except it wasn't on camera, <laughs> it doesn't look like. Oh yeah, right. Cuphead. Part of my Get Angry series, huh? Start start doing that. Although, um, I have watched the, the Netflix cartoon. That's actually a pretty decent cartoon. The season 3 just came out, I think. I should have left that. Would have actually been a nice little color. Pooling right there. Other than uh, just kind of comparing it to the the cartoon, like it really the the art theme sells the whole game because otherwise it's just sort of a generic game. So like the characters and the atmosphere and the environment, I think, really kind of <laughs> well. So like you know, when Cuphead gets hit or or stuff goes on. Sometimes the the action turns into words, right? And you can just edit in French swear words in the background. I guess I can do some of the flesh. Flesh wash into the red. has turned out. I still keep noticing this thing, though. Uh, where did my brush go? Dang it. Caught under my keyboard here. That's not the right brush at all. I don't know why I grabbed that one. Um, there. There, 
Das hört sich das. Man, listening to the music of these soundtracks is kind of off-putting for me because when I watch a series, especially like Cuphead, for example, um, you know, when I watch other people's videos, I'm watching it like at least 1.5 speed, usually 1.75, sometimes two. So like all the songs, all the music and, and stuff that I'm used to, it's actually listening to it at normal speed sounds really slow. <laughs> to do with those horns. Um, that's matte black. How about this one? I don't want to leave you out of the double-fisted paint shaking. Consistency this is. Okay. It is <laughs> hardened in the bottle consistency, apparently. Just out of camera. <laughs> I mean, it's a different enough color. It does kind of does kind of show. At least it does to me. subtle highlight. I'm really big on that, and it's not the best. Because sometimes I'll, I'll paint some things, and then I'll look at it in actual daylight and sunshine, and it's really hard to tell. It looks good up close, but when you're not inches away from it, Sort of drying out there. Give it another one. 
And then, I don't know, maybe like an actual, actual highlight? Uniform gray? Let's see. I think I'm done with that metal. I'll put that one away. I think I'm done with that metal. I really got into jazz and swing music in college. My, uh, my roommate was a music major, and he went on to be a, a music teacher, but uh, he also had a band, a jazz band, and he'd play records of old jazz musicians and stuff. Pretty good stuff. And now uh, I'm subscribed to a channel called Funky Panda. And there's a few others too, but there's like a new. Uh, what the hell does that chord go? Uh, a new. Well, I say new. It's been around for probably 15 years by now. Um, like a, a, a electro swing is what it's called. But they they do a lot of stuff like that. Um, there, there's been several Christmas songs, in fact, that uh, have come out, but obviously I cannot play those on the stream because of copyright and all that. But even move the ball. <sighs> All right, well, <laughs> give that a minute. I'm Mr. King Dots. I'm the gamest in the line. I never play nice. I'm the devil's right hand man. I need to start putting some of these colors back or else all my colors are going to fall. Oh. Oh. I think I'll keep that, actually. Keep that out. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, maybe I should use this. Fur brown. Uh, I'm gonna keep this. I was using. I was gonna use that as a highlight. All right. Uh, let's try this one more time with whatever's left in the pot here before it's completely dried out. Oh. Looks like it did not fully dry. I'm picking up some paint. It's okay. It kind of gives it a little bit of a highlight. All right. Ah, I mean, that looks okay. Um, I don't know, a few minutes. Like, I don't think it's fully dry whenever I start painting over it, but it doesn't take too long, mostly because I thin it down. Like, using the wet palette, making it uh, watery and, and kind of thin helps it dry. This light doesn't, it's an LED light, so it doesn't heat it too much. But when I had um, just a normal incandescent light, that was actually really useful for drying things out. But it is also why I switched to a wet palette, because it would dry my paint out. Bristles are all over the place there. Okay, uh, what next? Um, plate metal? I guess I can try highlighting some of that stuff. The gray is probably dry. So maybe I'll give myself an extra little 
nothing on that first. Just at the tips. Well, that's not really where I should be putting that if I'm going to highlight it. be able to base the thing here pretty soon. Alright. I'm already getting an air bubble popping out of there. I'm also doing kind of a bad thing. You're supposed to change your water between doing uh, metallics and non-metallic paints, but that's okay. I actually kind of like it when it gives a little bit of a metallic sheen to the color. That ought to be enough anyway. Teeny tiny brush. It's actually probably a better choice. Maybe I will turn that back on. My constant battle with turning the light back on and off. painting session too. For such a simplistic figure it's actually taken me a little bit too long I think. Alright, I'm not going to highlight all the links, just the ones that would be on the top. that. It looks like it pooled on the bottom there. It's alright. Gives it an extra little bit of a shadow. Alright. Edge. I must have moved the camera a little bit. Either that or my hand placement isn't where it used to be. too strong of a highlight there. Highlighting is the bane of my existence. You need a really sharp point on the brush to do a good job. Unfortunately, even though this little brush is insane detail, the bristles are too soft. They don't hold a point very well. It is pretty appropriate, actually. Should have thought about using it sooner. Just any kind of jazzy sound. 
I think that's probably because so much classical Christmas music is of that era. probably looks worse up close. That should be fine. Be fine in daylight. But you can't see that. I think I can probably take this thing off. crumbly. Put you back on there. Yeah, it, like, this stuff is looking a little shiny. It's drying, but definitely left a little bit of a, a sheen behind. When it, oops. Oh. <laughs> See, and there. Maybe, maybe you can tell, maybe you can't. Probably not. There's a little bit of silver on the brush. Exactly why you shouldn't be washing your brushes in metallic paint. Oh well. Whatever. I think that's it. I think that's just shiny. I think it's just shiny. All right, where are we at now? highlighting the flesh, or highlighting the cloth. Um, how do I want to highlight that? Because if I go super bright... Wait a minute. Oh. I can't go brighter than that, because that is the brightest red that I have. That can't be right. Fur brown, maybe. Well, the orange is a little bit too bright. Fur brown might work. Might work out all right. The uh, the belt that really came together after I applied that wash on there filled in all the deep recesses and whatnot. Still not totally sold on the, the flesh highlight, though. I'm 
afraid I'm going to end up lightening it too much. Let's see if I can get this done real quick. I, man. Maybe I should go change the water. I will be fine. Also got the gray. Let's, let's go ahead and take a poke of the gray here. Just a little bit. Just a little, little bit. playing with fire here. <laughs> I'm think i trying to I'm trying to rub it, but I think I'm putting too much pigment in there, so I'm just rubbing really bright pigment into the tips of the horns. And uh, you can't see that at all. I think I'll stop messing with the highlights there. Let's put in this one now. Almost done here. Maybe I should put it down here. Ah. Gotta unplug every color that I've got, apparently. Still pretty watery. Okay, well, how do I want to try that? I guess I can try doing very thin stripes. All right, that does look a little bit much, but I think because it is watery, it will dry and it will look all right. or not. It helps accentuate the, the darker thing as well. Hey, there's an idea. Tropical soundtrack would be good. All right, now that one's going to be a little bit trickier. All right, you know what? Let in... Let's break in my new dry brush my makeup brushes it's not really getting a lot of that paint on there it's too much 
paint, I think. Bristle just a little bit. All right. Oh, you had the music in your head all day. Imagine me. Especially the hours I would put in off-camera trying to fix things. That got very repetitive. I think it was so repetitive though because there's an option in the sound to, uh, to turn off um, or to, to only use stream-friendly music. So apparently a lot of the soundtrack is copyright strikeable. And uh, so I'm sure there's more to the soundtrack I just never heard. but. In the series, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's a very, very easy to get stuck in your head kind of soundtrack. You know what? That's not doing what I wanted to do. Spend some time breaking in these bristles. Gotta push a little too hard and then it's putting too much color on it. Especially on the hooves, which is not where I wanted this color. I guess it's working. Sort of. It's very subtle. I think I'll I think I'll call it good for that. I'm also gonna have to learn how to take care of the makeup brush a little bit better. It's not like the other kind of paint paintbrushes. Alright, I think we can flip that over. No, it's already been flipped. That's an incredibly, incredibly subtle highlight. That's all right, though. I don't think anything has to stand out cartoonishly, necessarily. Although it does, it is kind of a good look. Um, like the, the Games Workshop pictures that are very starkly highlighted. A lot of contrast in the mini. the stream stop? What happened to the stream? Okay. 
Uh, what next? Try. Oh, right. I was gonna. I was also gonna use this to try and highlight the uh, the red. Let's see. Let's see if this does what I wanted to. Probably not. I don't dislike it, but it's not quite what I'm going for. Maybe I should go for like a pinkish color. Let me put that back. Come on. How about tanned flesh? You're getting in my way. Be a lesson for me next time not to use this color red. Ah, oh, yeah, that's better as my base color. Maybe I'll, I'll put a wash on it, darken it back down again. That's really bright. I think this highlight's doing quite what I wanted it to. It is making it look kind of dusty, though. I do actually have a red wash. The thing that always screws me up when I'm using these colored washes is that uh, it, it always looks like it's not doing anything until it dries. 
and then it gets way darker than I actually think it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The glazes. It looks completely different. Alright. <laughs> too many shadows now. Maybe I'll, ooh, maybe I'll just uh, lower the intensity a bit. That looks a little bit better. All right. Well, what is left? I guess just highlighting the skin. I think I'll go with this tanned flesh uh, for the highlight. It's a bit darker than the flesh I started out with. Yes, this is my highlight brush. Uh, I think I did some pottery up until high school, as a matter of fact. For an art class. Okay, you know what I just noticed here is that did forget to highlight the braids up front here. Yeah, see, now that is way too much. It's the wrong color, too. So there's a, there's a problem. kind of frustrating not being able to see exactly what you want until afterward. I guess that's that's where all the experience comes in. Do it often enough until you know how things are going to turn out instinctively. I mean, this is a little wet, but if I keep it wet like this, it'll also highlight like a little bit of a glaze.
comencemos, ¿ok? This should look better as it dries. It's not really in frame there. Well, if you don't look too hard, you can't really tell the gap is there. Light and I are going to fight the whole time. I gotta find out, if I'm going to do this, do painting again, I'm going to have to figure out a better protector for my elbows. I don't know if that comes up on camera too well, but you can kind of tell subtle highlight compared to the non-highlighted. In broad daylight, this could look completely different. I've done some things that up close I thought, hey, this looks pretty good, and then look at it later and it's just like a blotch of color. <laughs> Stands out very starkly. Where's the cord? I can hear it rubbing. Ah, dang it. Put that in there too far and now I can't get to it. I can tell. It, it's very subtle. It's a very subtle highlight. I think this light is actually working against me right now, because it is giving some very deep, very deep shadows on the camera.
if I want that highlight to be anywhere, it's going to have to be right here at the bridge. I might hit that again with another another highlight. Definitely more noticeable this time around. I'm afraid I've made him a little bit paler than I wanted to initially. Kind of helps me out though. Because now I at least have sort of a baseline for uh, what will work on black skin. Like this, the, the skin color in the camera right now is definitely paled out just a little bit. To me, it looks like a Mediterranean tan. And it's not picking up the highlights at all on this. I'll have to take a picture and put it on the Discord when I'm done. Because I think I can pick out the the nuances a little bit better. Alright, now the fun part. Let's get these orange eyes going. Better shake this up a little bit better. Touch of this. That'll be good. And now, now the fun part. Dotting the tiny, tiny, tiny ass little eyes. Trying to get it into focus here, too. Okay. It's a little bit much, but I will put a wash on it to really get into the recesses. And should, in theory, leave behind very bright eyes. Like, I really screwed up that eye. That's a little too much. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm almost done here. What if I turn that back to warm color? Eh. That might represent reality a little bit more. Right. I was going to base this but uh, unless you want to sit and watch me do that, I can do that in my own time. But I think, otherwise, that's pretty, pretty much done. You can kind of see the bright eyes. I think my favorite part and again, this isn't really coming out, is how that turned out. How the backside really popped as soon as I put that wash in there. But to compare it to another Beast Man, 
Maybe I need to get rid of the... Ah, always changing the lights. There. Get rid of the warm glow. Like you can see, the highlights on this one are significantly lighter. And this one was following more or less the uh, the coloration on the box, because obviously, you know, without GW, I have to approximate paints. But uh, this one came out. A lot tanner, a lot darker. I still wish it had been even a little bit more dark, but definitely not as dark as this. Like the the one on the back here is just—it's too dark to even tell what it is, you know. I do think I screwed up that rock, though. That rock looks pretty bad. That was the wrong color to go with. Oh well. Well, I mean, maybe. <laughs> it's a very sandy rock. Um, so what I can do, let's see, let's get the flesh back here. And we'll put this in to tone down the atrocity of orange that I've got in there. professional paint jobs here. Uh, I think though in my my hurry I seem to have wiped off color here. I don't know what's going on there because it looks really really dark on the edge of that cloth. And again that could just be from the staining. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Well, which one are you? I think this one goes to this. That one goes to that one. Or maybe not? I guess it doesn't matter. Alright. Again, this is for me to put it on the base, and then I can... I don't know how long it's going to take for the, the ground. Apply it though. If I get some of my glue. Alright, let's go with this. I hope this hasn't frozen up. Uh, crap, it looks like it has. I guess I'll find out. Oh yeah, it definitely has. I can't even open the thing. Brand new! <laughs> Shit. Not so much for that. Gonna have to get some new super glue. Okay, how about you though? 
my incredibly <laughs> so this this stuff as opposed to super glue this stuff is basically for melting plastics and that's how it bonds things together it is also extremely smelly <laughs> like holy crap and it doesn't work half the time for the things I want to paint or to, to glue so we will see if it works it seems to work best when you use a little like it, it needs to, to dry very rapidly <sighs> boy <laughs> Ooh. Damn. Ugh. Just got a whiff of that. <sighs> Boy. Nope. Didn't stick. Damn it. it. Seems like it wanted to, though. Pulled off some paint. I guess I can try it again. I think I'm gonna need actual super glue. Oh, yeah, <laughs> getting high on stream. Jesus, you can't hear me, can you? <laughs> it's because I had the microphone up. <laughs> Just talking to myself, don't mind me. Alright. I can never remember which does which. Get to try out my fancy texture tool. This is... this sounds like Mario. Funfair Fever. It's definitely got some Super Mario World in it. Yeah, um, it... I mean, it seems like it did. It's... Sort of staying. But yeah. See, now here's the thing. It says, fit parts together and then use the brush to introduce cement into the gaps. So it's supposed to be used as like a filler. To create that bond. Alright. Uh, God. Let's start with this, I guess. Looks like I've used more than I thought. 
scrape some of that out of there. So, stick all that on. Gotta get more of it. Does not stick to the tool very well. How the hell do they use this? to dry. So I'm probably not going to be able to uh, to paint this one because it's going to take so long to dry and do its thing. But you can at least base the thing and be done. Doesn't smell. Although who knows, maybe the cement burned my <laughs> my senses out. I can't tell. This stuff is meant to dry like, I guess, mud. And then this other stuff I've got is meant to crack, so it looks like uh, dry, deserty kind of mud. And they look really good together when you have one on top of them, the other, but. Well, I think this is a kind of clay. Um, like this, this is the expensive stuff. I, I was stupid to buy this because I think it's uh, Vallejo. Vallejo sells a tub of this stuff, so it's it's much cheaper to buy it in bulk. It's effectively the same thing. some rocks that aren't rocks. They're leftovers from my green stuff. Alright, I'll leave that little bit in the back there. Oh, did it, did it finally focus really nicely? <laughs> Sometimes it looks good, sometimes not, and I think a lot of that is because it get wa <coughs> gets washed out um, 
from the lighting. Alright, let me... Get some of this stuff on my hand now. Alright, let me crack this open. Now this stuff, I think, because it's a little bit more liquidy, needs to be shaken up. It's because of... it's because of Millhouse. He says it himself. Well, yeah, that's the context. I, I don't actually remember the context of the episode, but uh, obviously something goes well for him, and he's it's like, everything's coming up, Millhouse, instead of everything's coming up, Roses. I, I actually do not remember the context of the episode. So, like, when I grew up, you know, I, I grew up in the era of The Simpsons, right? But I never watched it because my mom was like super overprotective and like, you know, Bart was a bad influence, etc., etc. So I never got to watch The Simpsons growing up. And I didn't really watch episodes of it until basically college when it was on uh, reruns and whatnot. But um, when, when COVID struck and we had lockdown and all that stuff, uh, I b decided to binge watch all 30 seasons. At the time, there were 30 seasons. I think there's like 33 now. Um, and like all the, the Simpsons memes and stuff basically come from seasons 4, 5, and 6. Like it's, it's pretty crazy. And the, you know, I mean, I guess that makes sense because at that time, you know, it was probably when I was maybe middle school or late elementary school so like all the stuff that kids remember would have been just constant reruns you know but yeah like <laughs> those those apparently were the golden age for people with the simpsons i'm sorry if you can't really see this it's really all i'm doing is just dabbing this on places and it's not really going to show anything until it really starts to dry out Hopefully. Hopefully it'll work. Nice. Well, uh, this is probably going to take the rest of the day for this thing to dry, but oh, get a little bit closer there. That's that's the guy. Turned out all right. Nothing super special, I guess. I do kind of like how the. Uh, focus there um, the the wash on the weapon kind of gi give it gave it a little bit of a rusty look and it definitely looks better uh, not on camera like I can tell the difference a lot more but um, what I want to do actually before 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 it dries so here's my little my little baggie of green stuff bits, because I can't get myself to toss anything, apparently. But I've, I've turned some of them into uh, little stone-like pebbles, 
others into tentacles. <laughs> so I'll show you. I'll show you why I made the tentacles, because that's for some of the other characters I've got. But let's uh, tweezers, tweezers. Where are my tweezers at? glued in there. It's kind of... It's not sticking exactly. Right. This would look a little bit better if... Actually, sunk in. So I'm obviously going to have to paint these. Um, when this whole thing dries up. Okay, that'll do. So I got my little rocks in there. And then, other things that I have got. I've got some grass. So I'll put that on there. And then, I've also got some little uh, bushes. So I can make it not look like he's just in a big mud pit. And uh, it's probably too big of a base. Like... It's not a special character. I've probably dedicated too much basing material to it, <laughs> but, you know. Anyway. Oh, you having streaming issues now? Okay. Even the music's telling me it's time to take a break. Time to rope it in. Okay, anyway, before we go here, I will show you some of the... Uh, let's see, where are you? You? I think it's you. And then... One. All right, I'm gonna have to get the box up here so I can see what the hell's going on. Yeah. Oh, it's you. Well, I wonder if. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, here it would be because of the weather <sighs> that we'd have internet issues. Okay, so, like these guys, right? These blue guys are uh, followers of the Chaos God Zinch. And the, he is the god of change. And a lot of things, like in this particular instance, you're seeing one of those uh, characters split in two. Right, like he's... Right, so like these, these birdmen things, Zangors is what they're actually called. Um, this particular monster is a mutant, right? So he's splitting his, his face, he's transforming and whatnot. And so this is one of the ones that I ended up doing a bootleg of. And, I mean, you can definitely tell the bootleg fuck up feet and all that stuff. Um, not quite a perfect print at all. But... Um, one thing that was interesting that happened was that uh, when I made it, I made it a little bit too thick. Like, you can kind of tell the uh, this one's a little too thick. So there was a gap. And so I had to fill in the gap, and I decided with the, the green stuff that I would just make tentacles, because tentacles are a, a thing there. So I added... I don't know if you can see that. I added tentacles to his back as a, a mutation, an extra mutation. So that's why I've got these these little green ones, these little green tentacles in here, just because whenever I, I tried to make them, I would always end up with excess stuff, and then I'd just twist it into shapes, thinking I could add it to, to stuff. So I was kind of happy with that one, that I was actually able to, to do it and make something interesting out of it. 
What else have we got in here? Let's showcase some of these things. You are tipping over. Oh, damn it. So these are kind of funny. Um, in comparison to... Let me grab these ones. You and then I guess I'll grab you again. Okay. So like this is actually the first of the, the new miniatures that I painted back in the day. I kinda like how it turned out, because of the, the flamer that I actually made kind of look flamish. But you know, it's just part of the Space Marine set. I've got one of the ten chapters, like there's ten of uh, the characters and I painted them all up in, in different color schemes. Um, and it came with some other types uh, that I progressively got better at to the point where I made like this the captain here and this one I'm actually pretty pleased with because of the, the flag here like I did a coloration of it first and I didn't like it so I redid the flag but it turned out really well but n note the, the size of these things right these are the old ones. This is like 5th edition Space Marine. And then this is the new Space Marine that I bought in a set here. And uh, the color I'm going with here is from a chapter that is like less ostentatious. And they're also known for stealth, and so I bought this particular set specifically because of their armor and its type. But look at that, and compare it to this. <laughs> Pretty, pretty stark difference. Now, what's funny though, is like, these are normal marine armors, right? So this is, this is how they're supposed to, to wear them, and then this is Terminator armor. It's like tanky armor, and it's meant to be bigger. So like, this is the big size of these guys. And then you compare that to the normal one of the new type, and it's still, like this guy is still bigger than this. The size difference is absolutely outrageous, but it, uh, it's kind of funny just how, how that turned out. But see, here here in particular, if you can see the base, um, this is how that base is going to turn out when it gets all cracked and dried out. It's going to look all nice and like dirt, so I think that'll turn out pretty well. What else I got? This is the other other guy. So I've got a whole squad for these that I still just have not painted. But to compare these guys, like, so the Space Marines are supposed to be superhuman, right? Like, they're supposed to be over two meters tall. And then you compare it to the demon, who is almost as tall. <laughs> It's just, I don't understand games workshops scale. It's kind of weird. The merchant? I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Um, what else have I got in here? So, like, when I was first collecting these, I was just buying super cheap things off of uh, Amazon. And so, like, there were these... Is it this one? These Tengu Samurai that I got. And this one, I think it's this one. You can kind of see it. I was really proud of it. So, like, they're, they're raven crow people, right? And, uh, like, I managed, I don't, it's not really coming in on the camera, but I managed to get, like, an, an iridescent kind of purpley... Oh, man, is that why, is that why it wasn't looking so good? Because it's been out of focus <laughs> this whole time? I gotta pull it back. Did I have the, the miniatures too close to the camera as I was painting? 
that's possible. But anyway, just a, these are the ones that uh, were kind of the, the white rubbery plastic and it, that said it was primed and really wasn't. Like I really had to glob on the paint for this. This one turned out all right. This one was like the first one where I had done full on skin. As it, because you know these other characters, like the the Viking woman here, obviously patches of skin, but not in such quantity that it's really hard to highlight or you know d define a tone or whatever. In fact, let me turn off the brightness so you can actually see the shadow of it. Um, you can kind of see the highlight. Not as much, but like this one, just full on flesh tone, right? Because of the the lion. But uh, the dry brushing, and it doesn't really come across. The dry brushing helps make it look like fur. And this one, I think, was the fastest I'd ever painted anything. Cause I just I just went with it. I just tried it, and I got this done significantly less time than this last one took. Almost five hours now. But, uh... I guess I can do this one here. So, uh, like, I've got a lot of miniatures set up, but not painted. But this one... has gotta be my biggest one. So I think... I think the actual name of this is Queen of Hell. Again, compare, compare to the size of the Space Marine here. It is a sizable miniature. And uh, I'd meant for her to have kind of like a purplish skin, and then I ended up going with like kind of a highlight of pink and then tan flesh color, and boy, that is not focusing at all, is it? Um, it, it came out pretty cool, I think, with the sort of the ethereal lighting. But then she's got these wings here that uh, I have purposely left off because they don't... She, she won't fit in the box otherwise. But look at that! That is a massive thing. And if, if you're looking at like this, because this would probably be about you know, regular Dungeons & Dragons size, it's just a massive figure. I mean, I think this is probably meant for it. Just... <laughs> Outrageous. And it's super top-heavy, too, because of the wings. So she just falls all over the place. Boy, that really does not... That really does not want to focus, does it? There. I don't know. I'm going to have to figure out... Like, if, I, if I'm going to do more painting stuff, I'm really going to have to figure out uh, proximity to the camera for, for all that. But... So, like, I've progressively gotten better. I think, I think these guys were the last things that I've painted. I was pretty happy with the way they turned out, despite all the <laughs> mangled bodies and whatnot, but just the, like, the blue flesh, because I don't have this tone. So I had to mix colors to get to that tone, and that's actually pretty similar to what's on the box. So I was really happy with that as, as far as painting went, but... Also because I had had these, after I had made these, and uh, put them together, and then gone through the painting of them, there's 20 of them. Like, the, the whole thing, they had been sitting on my desk for probably close to a year, I would say. I think it was like eight months, nine months, by the time I actually finally finished them. So I was, I was actually pretty proud of myself at that point, because... The, the, like, I'd, I'd gotten the base coat, like the blue, and then they just sat there. And then I'd sat down for, like, a week, almost, and just busted them out. And they turned out pretty good for a production line. So that was, like, that was my first experience, I think, with sort of the assembly line painting that some people do for build, making their armies. But, man, <laughs> I can't I can't do one figure, you know taking five hours to, to get this thing done. It's pretty basic. Like, compared to some of these with a lot of color, like these, you know? This 
this should not have taken me the four hours that it did, five hours that it is now. But, oh well, there it is. And uh, so yeah, when, when this is all dry, I'll do the extra stuff and uh, I'll post a picture of it on the Discord so you can see how it is completed. But uh, man, I, <laughs> I have too many miniatures. I don't know why I spent so much. Well, it's because I wanted to make a miniatures game myself and then I was like, well, I'll just do it with other miniatures and I'll collect these and I'll paint them because I was bored. Just another one of those many project ideas, you know. Anyway, I think it's probably time to end the stream for now. Um, I don't know. Do we want to go back to uh, go back to uh, Two Point Hospital for for New Year's or do more painting? Because I've got plenty of figures I could do painting on. Well, it is a little bit different, and it does kind of give me practice, too. So I guess I could do more. Oh, I mean, aside from this box that I'm looking at full of stuff, I've also got Battletech. I could paint some Battletech next time. That could be fun. Okay. Well, sure, we can take a break from the usual and do something a little bit different. Only halfway done with the Cuphead uh, soundtrack. Have to figure out something else for next time, of course. But I don't exactly know what would be good for a, a New Year's stream. It doesn't really matter. We can have whatever. But okay, well, uh, I will end this one here then. So thanks for watching, and have a merry whatever, and... Uh, so I'll continue with the, the painting next week. Man, this is this is actually kind of a pain, though. The, the whole setup. My desk is a mess right now. <laughs> but, oh well. We'll, uh, we'll figure something out. Okay, well. I will see you next time, then. Happy Holidays.